Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today is my second blog for the year. I'm doing a quarterly blog. So I did one at the end of March and today's July 1st and I'm going to be recapping what's been happening in April, May and June for 2021. So this year has turned out to be a lot different than I expected. Um, I usually don't talk about personal things that much here on YouTube or Instagram or the blog, but I've been really impacted this year by migraines. And starting in February of this year, I started getting just daily headaches and it was really starting to impact my life, you know, because they were really to a bad point where I was feeling nauseous and dizzy pretty frequently and just not able to work or so or do fun things. So um, I finally went and saw a headache specialist in April and got officially diagnosed with migraines. So it was pretty bad at that point. Um, and since then I've started taking a daily medication and doing a lot of different things to treat them, but it's really had a big impact and I've really just shifted my focus on to treating that and getting healthy so that I don't continue to have them and so that it doesn't become really long-term chronic. I've had migraines really since I was a teenager and started menstruating, um, as happens to a lot of women, but they've just really become a lot worse. And so I'm in my early 40s, and I believe it's just associated with the changing hormones and perimenopause. So it's really a hard thing to treat. Um, if you have migraines, I'm sure you understand that there are hundreds of ways to treat them, but they, those treatments don't work for everybody. So it's really a puzzle to figure out the different things that are going to work for you and then put, to, put them together because it's not just one thing. It's going to be like 20 different things probably that you have to do. So it's been pretty hard um, just taking a lot of my energy, focusing on that, trying you know, I eliminated caffeine and alcohol and other foods that could be triggers and really focusing on getting good sleep and trying supplements and um, it's helping, but I'm really not there yet. I still have a lot of days during the month where I don't feel well. And, you know, especially around my period, I'll have like 10 days where I don't feel good. I feel nauseous. I just have to lay down. I'm extremely fatigued. So I really hope that it gets better. But so far this year, it's really had a big impact. And especially because I'll just be not feeling good for such a long period of time, it disrupts any kind of um, pattern or habits that I have. So, you know, normally I'd be like, OK, I'm going to wake up and do this every day. But when I have that week long time where I can't do as much, it, kind of, it really disrupts the system. And then once I feel better, I have to play catch up and like, oh, you know, I haven't done laundry in three weeks. So it's it's been tough. Um, but wanted to let you know what's going on. If you have migraines, I'm sure you can understand. Or if you have somebody in your life with migraines, um, you can, I'm sure you know how debilitating it can really be. And it's something that runs in my family. So it's something that I've really been aware of, but it was a really um, kind of, surprised to officially be diagnosed, but it also felt like a relief. Like, okay, it's not that I'm not drinking enough water. It's, it's that actually I have a brain disorder and I need to figure this out and learn more about my brain. So it's a journey. Um, if you've been wondering why you haven't seen as many videos from me or why I haven't been on Instagram very much, that's why I'm just trying to get healthy and focus on that like core, <laughs> core stuff that's important so that in the future I can hopefully get back to my maximum level of um, living life and sewing and doing all the things that I love to do. So along with just focusing on my health the past few months, I've had the opportunity to do a lot of freelance work. And the freelance work, I um, work as an art director, graphic designer. It's really, it pays really well. <laughs> it pays a lot better than selling digital patterns. So I've also been spending a lot of time just working on that. So between essentially working full time doing art direction and just trying to take care of myself, I really just haven't had time for sewing. But I'm really hoping that I can 
get it back into my practice soon. Um, as I said, it's just really hard to like build a daily practice when I get thrown off for a week plus every month. So now let's talk about some fun stuff. I have done a little bit of crafting this month and I have just three blog posts for the month um, or for the three months. <laughs> it's a very low amount for me, but let's get into it. So um, this is the Nanaimo sweater. And I believe I was in the process of knitting this during my last vlog. So it's a very chunky, cozy sweater. It was really nice to wear earlier this year when it was a little cooler. Uh, my house gets really cold because I don't have insulation or central heating. So I really appreciated having this sweater around to put on and keep me warm. And I do have a blog post about this and I will link to that down in the show notes. Another cozy make is this Aurora jacket. It's a quilted jacket and I started working on it back in January and I think I finished in early May, late April. Um, it was so much, it took so much more time to make than I thought it would, <laughs> you know, because I love making improvisational quilts and using up all my fabric scraps. So I thought, oh, well, I'll do that and make a jacket because that'll be really fun. I love all these colors together. Um, but I just took so much longer than making a quilt. Um, <laughs> so I probably won't be making another quilted jacket because it just took me so many months to do and it felt kind of tedious. Um, my process of making a quilt is a lot more streamlined. It's a little more free flowing um, because I just go with whatever shape happens from the scraps. Um, and if you want to learn more about my improvisational quilting, um, I have a course that teaches you how to use your fabric scraps to make quilts. And I'll also put that in the show notes. And there's a blog post about this too with lots more details. So another fun thing that I was working on in May is a video class for a drawstring backpack. I have a few samples here. And this is a class that's part of a summer camp that Rebecca Page is hosting. So it's a week long virtual summer camp. It's free to sign up and watch the videos for that whole week. And that is July 12th through 16th. And my backpack class is gonna be one of the classes. There are 40 classes and they're for kids age eight to 12. So it's pretty cool. I think they're gonna be a lot of fun classes. And again, it's free to watch all those classes for that one week. And if you want to have like a VIP pass and watch the classes later, you can also purchase that. And if you do purchase that, I will get a portion of the proceeds. So that would help me. Um, but if that's not in your budget, definitely sign up to watch it free. I think there'd be a lot of fun things for kids or even yourself to learn. So I have a lot of projects still in progress. Um, the only things I finished were the backpacks, the quilt coat, and the cardigan. Because as I said, I was just focusing on other things. Um, so my Rosa shirt is still in progress. I don't know if I've made any progress since my last vlog. Um, I did order a new machine foot for um, my Janome. That's a, an edge stitch foot. Because I was kind of having trouble top stitching the collar. So um, I ordered that like two months ago. I need to try it out and see if it would help um, with some of this top stitching. Then a new project that I have started is I've cut out two projects from this fabric. This is a silk fabric that I bought from the fabric store when they had their LA location. And I probably bought it like eight years ago. And it's this really fun brush stroke. It has like pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, and brown. And so I'm making a parasol dress, which is a pattern by Chris Wood Sews. Um, that's her handle on Instagram. You can just look up Chris Wood parasol dress. And it's, uh, it's a really unique pattern because you put in your measurements and then it'll tell you um, different size rectangles that you cut out and make into a dress. So I'm in the process of sewing it. Um, I've kind of stalled out because I've had other work to do, but hopefully I can get back to it. 
So along with the um, parasol draw dress, I was able to cut out a mahogany turban from that same fabric because um, silk is supposed to be really good for curly hair. So um, yeah, so I have those two projects like all ready to get sewing on. So another project that I have cut out and waiting to sew is a Darling Ranges dress and that's by Megan Nielsen. I'm using this fabric that I got as a gift from IC Fabric. And I don't remember what kind of fabric it is. It was maybe two years ago, I think, that she gave it to me. So um, I'm really excited to make it. I have another dress that I've made from that pattern that I really like. Um, the only thing was I didn't quite have enough fabric so for the skirts. So um, I've cut the skirts as big as I can. They're just rectangular panels, so I think there'll just be less um, less gathering in it, but I think it should be okay. So, I mean, for now, the project has just been sitting and the cat sleeps on it all the time. <laughs> and that's why there's cat fur all over it. But another project on my list, I think it'll be good for summer. Um, I'm kind of excited about sewing some things that are using up my stash fabric, like this one for the parasol dress. You know, I've had it for eight years and I've decided I'm just gonna dive in and start sewing it and use up these things and just do some really fun sewing projects. During this last three months, you know, there was Me Made May in May and due to my health stuff, I did not really participate in Me Made May this year. Um, I tried to share photos when people tag me and they'd use my patterns, but I only posted my own outfits a couple of times and I was really okay with that. I felt like I didn't have the mental capacity to devote to a challenge and taking a photo every day. But my big realization for the month, once I got to the end, I thought, you know, I just really miss making things just for fun. So I did make a little plan of things that I want to be making. And I have a blog post about that. Um, so that includes the parasol dress um, and just some other fun things for summer. So another fun thing I wanted to share with you is Amy from Craft and Thrift. You can find her here on YouTube or on Instagram at Craft and Thrift. She's based in Scotland and she has an Etsy shop where she sells um, secondhand or dead stock fabric and she sells kits. So she's been selling kits for the Sozo undies and she's going to start selling kits for my Lou box top pattern soon. So if you are in the UK, or I think she probably ships elsewhere in Europe, um, definitely check her out and check out her YouTube channel. I'll put links to that down below. I have been working a little bit on a new pattern that I think I started in February. Um, things are a lot slower this year, as I mentioned, with the health stuff and with just working this other job. So, um, you know, last year, I think I released like three new patterns and two updated patterns and a class. And we're now six months through the year and I have not released anything. So um, it feels a little bit disappointing. I feel like I'm just not getting things done, but it's also just that this time of life, you know, it's kind of this season of my life, I'm not able to do as much. So um, just trying to feel okay with that. And um, mostly I just want to be like having more fun with sewing. I feel like I'm never in my sewing room. I'm never doing this practice that I really love. So I need to figure out how to get back into that practice. But anyway, the new pattern is for a tank top and um, it has two views, uh, like one that has a rounded neckline and rounded um, armholes. And then the other one has a V neckline and squared off armholes. So it's designed to be a really beginner friendly pattern and it's going to have cup sizes. So it's um, an AB cup, a CD cup and an EF cup. So my hope is that it would make it a lot easier for people who are beginners to find the right size and not have to do a full bust adjustment. And ideally, I'd also like to do a beginner sewing class to go with it. I have the class all outlined and I just haven't been able to get to it because of everything else. But maybe it would be great if I could release that by the end of the year. Um, the pattern, there are a lot of pattern pieces because of all the different cup sizes. When I decided to do the cup sizes, I didn't realize um, just how many pattern pieces there would be. Um, but it's fun, I think it'll be great. I 
you know, have quite a bit more work to do on it. So maybe August or September, you could expect that coming out. So I think that's it for today. Definitely check out my backpack class. I'll have a link down below so you can sign up. I hope that you are all doing well and that you're healthy and happy and safe. And thank you for following along and listening to my, my long story over the last few months. I really appreciate all the support and following along. And I hope to be posting more often in the future. Happy sewing. 